Hello, welcome to the Ponderings Podcast. I'm your host, Milo. In this episode, I'm going over the third chapter in Alfred North Whitehead's book, Modes of Thought. This chapter is on understanding. It is the last part in the first section called The Creative Impulse. You can find my podcast on any podcast hosting site like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean. You can also find this podcast on YouTube. All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. So this chapter is really concerned with, well, primarily concerned with the quest to understand understanding. Whitehead says that this is a hopeless task, but it is one that we endeavor to attempt in this lecture. On page 42, he states that whatever exists is capable of acquiring knowledge in respect to the finitude of its connections with the rest of things, unquote. Meaning, we can know anything in the world only partially, through some of its perspectives, but not all, not perfectly. Because the totality of perspectives requires infinitude that is beyond finite knowledge. For instance, we can know the color green in some of its perspectives, but we are not capable of knowing the color green in other epochs of the universe. We only have the ability to imagine the possibilities of green. Imaginative insight allows us to gain an alternative possibility of nature, an an alternative understanding of nature. We can gain a possible understanding, but not a perfect understanding. With that being said, understanding is never a complete static state of mind, but rather it is an ongoing process. It always bears a process of penetration. We gain a a fuller self-knowledge rather than a completion of the job of intelligence. So on page 44, he states, understanding is limited by its finitude and any knowledge of the finite always involves a reference to infinitude, unquote. The 19th century emphasized the specialization of disciplines in universities. Though this has provided an advancement in knowledge and understanding in most subdivisions, it has shrunk the width of comprehension among them. Whitehead states that if we want our civilization to advance, we must gain a more comprehensive understanding of the subjects and how they interconnect as a whole. So before we get into all that, we have to break down what understanding is. So what is understanding? We must consider the notion of composition when defining understanding. There are two modes to define understanding according to Whitehead. The first mode on page 45, he states, if the thing understood be composite, the understanding of it can be in reference to its factors and to their ways of interweaving so as to form that total thing. End quote. This mode of comprehension lets us know why something is the way it is. Conversely, the second mode of understanding requires us to treat the thing as a totality or unity and to analyze its relation and affect in its environment. The first mode is a composite or internal understanding, while the second mode is an external understanding. The first mode conceives it as an outcome. The second mode conceives it as a causal factor. One is the composite parts making up the unity, and the other is the unity as a composite part of the environment. So we'll continue reading on on page 46. Nothing is finally understood until its reference to process has been made evident. First, I'm going to define what we mean by evident and self-evident. Something is evident when it is plain or obvious, when we are able to clearly see it or understand it. Something is self-evident when it is evident in itself without proof or demonstration. Whitehead claims that self-evidence is understanding. We finally come to understand something once it requires no proof. 
once it is self-evident. What is Whitehead trying to do here? With all of this talk of evidence, self-evidence, understanding, etc. Before we answer that question, let's define proof. So proof for Whitehead is a second-rate procedure. It is a way to produce self-evidence, but it's, you know, the second hand. It's, it's not self-evidence. It's something that can bring about self-evidence. It is second rate because if there is proof that fails to achieve or produce self-evidence, then it becomes unnecessary proof. The purpose of proof is to show the self-evidence of basic truths that concern the nature of things and their connection. With this line of thought, Whitehead is trying to get at the fact that logical proof is composed of premises that are based on evidence, and that this evidence is then presupposed by logic, meaning that we must assume logic has importance. Evidence by proof is understanding that is built on logic, not self-evidence as such. That being said, on page 49, Whitehead plainly states philosophy is either self-evident or it is not philosophy, unquote. The aim of philosophy is to produce self-evidence or self-evidences, and as such, it is something that cannot be proved. Whitehead likens philosophy to sheer disclosure. Philosophy gives light to fragmentary details. It makes the human mind manageable, making connections, disclosing consistencies, inconsistencies, etc. Language is what makes philosophy fail at its task to disclose. Language itself is a form of proof-making or evidence-making. Philosophy, although its main task is to disclose the self-evident, its main difficulty is the expression of self-evidence. Philosophy can be likened then to intuition, which comes before language. Our understanding is similar to intuition in that it outruns the ordinary usages of words, as Whitehead puts it. On page 51, Whitehead states, We can never fully understand, but we can increase our penetration. Our intuition is limited and it flickers. So proof becomes a tool for us to use as an extension of our imperfect self-evidence. Proofs presuppose some clarity and some understanding of our penetration into the nature of things. Nevertheless, it is imperfect. Another aspect of understanding that comes up are the notions of disorder, error, and evil. Whitehead claims that these are the words we use when things go wrong and the notions of worse to better or better to worse come into our understanding. Whitehead proposes that we need to view both disorder and order as fundamental, allowing room for both. In order to do this, we can think of order as the unity of things and disorder as multiplicity. Penetration or deeper understanding is when we step back from the unity or generalization of things and we step into or penetrate into the details, the fragments, and then eventually come back to the generalization with a deeper understanding. Understanding then requires us to switch back and forth from these two types of understanding, the universals and the particulars. On page 52, Whitehead states, we are in the present. The present is always shifting. It is derived from the past, it is shaping the future, it is passing into the future, unquote. Process is repetition, pattern. It is not a whole togetherness or sameness, but rather it is an ongoing thing which discloses exclusions to a repeated pattern. Whitehead states that process is the way by which the universe escapes from the exclusions of inconsistencies. Process is not finite, but neither is it infinite. In a way, it is both, in that the process itself is infinite, comprised of finite occasions which shift and change 
but are in a sort of pattern or have a level of order to their organization. On page 56, Whitehead states that all that we can do is make an abstraction, a presupposition that is relevant, and push ahead within that presupposition. So science as a discipline is one that is built on abstractions, meaning that although there are some things we can know, it is amidst the backdrop of a dark, infinite, ever-expanding universe. Science itself will never be fully clear, but we can always strive for more clarity as long as we are open to adapting and tweaking our views as new levels of understanding are acquired. So this was a short episode, but I felt that this lecture was kind of repetitive. So I sort of just laid out the basic things, the most important things about this specific chapter. In the next episode, I will start the next section in Alfred North Whitehead's Modes of Thought, which covers his conception of perspective. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I hope this Whitehead series has been helpful in deepening your understanding of Whitehead's philosophy so far. If there are any questions you might have, you can always message me on the Ponderings YouTube channel or send an email to ponderingspodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for listening and stay tuned.